Once outside the forest, we make a fire and heat the flexible rods to harden them. Then we remove the bark and cut them to the right size for each man. We have had to defend our country since the white man set foot in it. According to them, our land was called Terra Australis Incognita until in 1605 the first European arrived, the Spaniard Fernández de Quiros, who called it Australia del Espíritu Santo. Then, 170 years later, the pirate James Cook renamed it New South Wales and raised the English flag. The English used this island to send us their prisoners. Eighty years after the first ones arrived, there are 170,000 convicts in Australia. But the worst came in the middle of the 19th century, when they discovered gold in our territory. It was then that we really began to get in their way. The Aborigines, as they started to call us, were captured confined to distant regions, and finally infected with many diseases such as the flu, which devastated our population. During all this time, we bravely fought the invaders with our spears, but the white man had gunpowder and rifles, and in the end, he defeated us. Today, our spears claim other victims. When the tide goes out, we fish for the dangerous stingrays that hide in the sand, ready to plunge their enormous stings into anyone who dares disturb them. It takes practice to find them hidden in the sand and not stand on them. Their stings are very painful, but our fishermen are almost never caught by surprise. They launch their harpoons into them from a distance. When they have caught them, they hold the tail with their mouth and pull out the poisonous sting. After pulling off the skin and gutting them, we pound and knead the flesh with our hands and eat it raw. It's a real delicacy. Now you're young, you must learn everything about our culture. I now know you go to the white man's schools, but our identity must survive, otherwise, you will be nobody. Now our people live in reservations. We are no longer nomads, but they can't take away our laws and our beliefs. That must be the most important thing in our lives. In 1931, Arnhem Land in Northern Australia was declared an Aborigine reservation. And in the 1967 Constitution, we Aborigines were given equal rights with the white men. Now we live in prefabricated houses, which are entirely foreign to our way of life. Traditional customs are breaking down. The young go off to study far away from their parents, 
and then don't want to return. And many Aborigines fall victim to alcohol. From 1967, the lands began to be our property. The white man promised to respect our sacred places, but of course, there's a trick. The administration of Aborigine lands is controlled by the whites, who obtain the profits from mining. In return, they pay us a kind of pension. That, that's the worst thing. It's the most efficient way of wiping out our culture. My people don't realize, but I am old. I know that if a man does not have to work, if he does not grow crops or hunt or do something, he very quickly destroys himself. Our coasts are full of animals which traditionally provided us with food. One thing we find particularly exquisite is turtle eggs. When we see the tracks of a giant turtle on the beach, we follow them and discover where it has laid its eggs. We carefully probe the ground with rods to find out where we need to dig and then take the eggs. A giant tortoise can lay hundreds of eggs. We never take them all. We always leave half of them so they will hatch and there'll be more eggs in the future. With our harpoons, we also fish turtles and manatees, pursuing them on motorboats. When we hear a spear or an animal, we throw a boy into the water with a long rope tied to a harpoon. The animal tries to escape, but the boy stops it from swimming freely. Very quickly, it grows tired, and then we approach to capture it. Retrieving the animal requires patience. You mustn't try to go too fast. You have to pull in the ropes little by little so the prey does not escape. If the animal is very heavy like the turtles, we usually secure it with another harpoon before dragging it into the boat. We catch turtles of up to 200 kilos, very difficult to pull out of the water. Whenever they catch a giant turtle, the fishermen arrange a feast right there on the beach to which all their relatives are invited.
First, they prepare a big fire on which they put stones, so they will become red hot. These stones are what will be used to roast the turtle meat. After cutting off its head, they begin to take out the entrails and the enormous intestine. This work is normally done by the oldest one in the group. With his experience, he knows by touch which parts should be removed and which left. When the fire dies down and the stones are hot, they start cooking. They stand the shell vertically on the ground, hold it in place with sand and start to fill it with the hot stones, with the carefully cleaned entrails and intestine and with aromatic herbs. When it is full, they place it on the embers of the fire. The stones roast the meat from the inside. With just the heat from the fire, it would be impossible to roast so much meat. Half an hour later, the banquet is ready to be carved up. That is, of course, after breaking through the powerful shell, which is not always an easy task. Pieces are cut off and selected to be shared out. Everyone must get the same amount of meat. If not, there will be problems between the different families of the fishermen. Normally, they choose a man who everyone trusts to share the meat out fairly. But no one will eat anything except the little bits of meat that have stuck to the shell until it has all been shared out. The juice that remains at the bottom is our turtle soup. The people drink it while the meat is still being carved. Then the main course, and everyone eats as much as possible. Mm.